Well, welcome back. Later on, we're going to go ahead and address uh, some of the comments we got in the last part, part two. We got some very interesting comments. And every once in a while, instead of writing the comments, uh, answers to the comments uh, under the video, I'll go ahead and cover them in the next video. I think I've done this two or three times in the past. It's going to be fun. Uh, but before we do that, it's, it's not going to be an awful long video, I hope, but before we do that, right now I'm in the process of removing this uh, white edge along here. This is the old glue that held the uh, surround on, and the surround was a cloth. It was obviously a cloth, and it just, it just flakes right off when you touch it. It's, just kind of get up under there, and you know, that was going to be, there we go. This comes right off, kind of, nothing to it, really. And then I'll have to clean up this lip all the way around, do my best. And I've already contacted a company called Simply Speakers. Now, Simply Speakers, I've used them in the past. Uh, I, I reconed a large speaker, and I needed the uh, surround. And their surrounds are great. They really work well. We're not going to put... A, you know a high dollar high value surround on this speaker we're going to go with the new modern uh, foam types that are very strong they're reasonably priced and this speaker is not going to be used very much at all you know it's not going to be there banging away you know with rock and roll and everything. every once in a while it may be pulled out and played but not very often so it's not like we need something you know that's really really super a uh, duper uh, titanium impregnated kind of, <laughs> kind of a surround. A good, solid, modern surround will do the trick. I've already contacted them. They told me the kind that I need to get, the size and the number, and I'll be ordering that in the near future. Meanwhile, uh, I've gone ahead and soaked those brackets that were holding that felt on. That oh, It was across here. You saw that in the last video. I've been soaking them. I, I took them to work with me yesterday and ran them across the wire brush on the, uh, you know, the grinding wheel. Uh, wire, wire brush on one side, grinding wheel on the other. And I cleaned up, you know, the majority of the rust, of the thick, heavy rust. The rest has been soaking overnight. So let me open this up. Let's take a look at it. Well, there they are. Now, this is a vapor rust. It's very safe. You can stick your fingers in it. You can get it on your hands. It's no problem. It's biodegradable. You can flush it down the sink and just run, run it down the sink. Or, and you can reuse it over and over and over and over until it finally gets to the point where you can't use it anymore. I buy by the gallon. I pick it up at uh, O'Reilly's Auto Parts is where I get mine. But I've only had to buy two gallons, and I've done a lot of rust removal. And as you can see, it's still fairly clear. Okay. Uh, one person told me he, he filters... Yeah, he puts it, I guess, back in the, after he's done using it, he puts it back in the container. And then either before or I mean, he either does this before or after, I'm not sure. He runs it through cheesecloth, which will remove a lot of the rust particles and whatnot. I like the idea. Well, uh, I, I took it all, I drained it all out of the uh, container uh, once. And uh, then washed the container out with water. And then poured it back in through a filter. And it kept it kind of nice and clean again. I'm still using it. So, you know, you can, you got, it's pretty expensive. So you do, it's about 20, 25 bucks for a gallon, but it lasts forever, you know. Anyway, let's take a look at it. It's totally 100% safe. It's getting all that rust right off there. Let's see if I, I'm not sure what that is. Probably some of the glue still on there that they had. I'll have to probably get that off there with a little lacquer thinner later, but the majority of the, this is just soaking it overnight. Look at that. The majority of the rust is gone. I don't have to do anything. Totally safe stuff. I like that. So we'll let this sit for another day or so. It's no big rush. We're in no big hurry. Okay. This will look really nice. When I get done, all I'm going to do is clear coat it. Uh, well, let me see. I might now nah, clear coat. I'll have to go with a clear coat. I was going to put uh, primer on there, but I'm not sure how that would work with the cement uh, to put the... Uh, you know, to put the uh, felt back on. I think a clear coat uh, would be much better for that. I'll think about that. This, that's in the future. You know, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Well, let's go ahead and uh, let me show you how I'm... Let me move this over here. Get that stuff over there. Let me show you how I'm removing. Oh, my goodness. I got liquid all over that thing. Shucks. It'll dry. Here's how I'm removing the... Uh, the, uh, the glue along here. It's, it's kind of a coarse sandpaper. Let me hear it. I'll let you hear it. Pretty coarse stuff. But I'm only gently doing it, you know. I'm just going to 
touch it to the uh, white part of the speaker, like so. There it goes. Just grind that old glue right off of there, get that crap. It's a slow process, you know, right now I'm just using it, you know, with this thing floating, but what I've been doing, I've done a portion of it over here already. I just stick my finger through here and, and support the back of the speaker cone while I do it. I hope not to get any of the sanding, uh, any of the sandpaper on the black part of the cone. Don't want to do that. Well, that takes care of that. The edge is sanded really nice now, and I didn't get into the speaker area. You know, it's one of those things you got to really take your time on. You know, don't go bananas on this stuff uh, when you're working on it. I don't care what it is, a speaker, a amplifier, a radio, a television, whatever. Don't go bananas on it. Remember, you're not trying to impress anyone. You're trying to restore a piece of antique equipment for the future. Don't worry about impressing anyone. If you've done a very good job, you've done your very best job, you've taken your time, you'll have a quality product when you're done, okay? Incidentally, uh, before I go to the next uh, section, I was going to do it earlier, but I'll do it after this. This is the uh, patch I put in. It conformed beautiful to that speaker. Look at that. I, I put a layer of the uh, liquid tape. I, I drew a pencil. I laid this on and drew a pencil around the outside so I know where it was. Laid a, a, a layer of liquid tape on there. Put the fiberglass on top of that. And then let it dry overnight. Or, or let it dry for a couple hours. And then after it dried overnight, I went ahead and uh, put another layer over the top along the edges and everything. That is nice and solid. And this speaker is fine. It's going to last forever now. Unless we get other cracks here, but that's some pretty strong paper. I'm amazed. I don't even know how that crack even got there. Might have gotten there from the you know, last time somebody handled it. I don't know. It was an old crack, but it was a big one all the way down to here. It's a great big sucker. Anyway, she's patched now. Let's start out with a comment from I'm a junk collector, Don. <laughs> now, Don's been watching my videos for years. Years, okay? <laughs> He says, why not snip the voice coil wires at the transformer, mount a terminal strip onto the transformer? Well, no kidding, Don. <laughs> you act like you've never seen me do that before. Come on, guy. You know, I didn't fall off the turnip truck yesterday. I know how to use a, a terminal strip, and I know how to use a pair of cutters. Remember? Chop, chop. <laughs> I appreciate the comment, even though I'm, I'm amazed that you would uh, think that I don't know how to do that. Incidentally, now, don't you guys take these as negative comments on my part. You know, I, I, a lot of them are great, but, you know, a lot of them, uh, they're just givens, you know. Telling me a given is kind of strange, you know. He said he was uh, biting his nails if the speaker fell off that bottle I had it mounted on. Come on, guy. You know, I, uh, I would have not put it on that bottle. If I did, if I thought it was going to fall. <laughs> oh, Don, he's a good feller up there in Ohio. I like him a lot. Uh, let me see. Uh, before we go any further on the next comments, please understand that th for those of you who may have just become uh, subscribers, this channel is geared toward the newbie. The newbie. It's not geared toward the old timers or the guys who have been doing it for years and know how to do all these things. You know, so some of the things... Uh, everything I try to do on my videos, I try to do it in a way that a newbie could also do it. Now, by newbie, what do I mean? I mean, it, well, it does, age has nothing to do with it. Male, female has nothing to do with it. It's maybe they're just new to the hobby. That's what I'm talking about. And they're trying to figure out how to do certain things. Maybe they have an old radio belonging to their grandpa they'd like to tackle and maybe get it going. And, and they sort of stumbled upon my... You know my channel and maybe other channels i try to keep things so basic so it's real easy for them to do so some of the comments i get you know it's like well do this this and this wait a minute yeah <laughs> no newbie's going to be able to do that you have to you have to keep this in the proper context okay yeah i understand some of the things that are put up here but they're so complicated and they cost a lot of money and there's a big you know giant giant procedure involved in it that no newbie would understand it keep it basic guys keep it basic uh, let me see uh, what's next here. Uh, here's a fellow that says, go ahead and use t-shirt material for the surround. 
Well, yeah, that would be okay. Oh, Amberola, we've had him around for a while. He said, use T-shirt. I don't, I don't want to do that. That that would be too time-consuming. We have available surrounds from Simply Speakers. I'd rather go with that. Let me see. Uh, uh, let me let me pick out a few, and I'll come back here. All right, here's one from our good subscriber, Nelson uh, Matos, I guess is the way it's spelled. And he said that uh, I should soak the rusty pieces I had in muriatic acid. Oh, come on now. You know, you know how to use muriatic acid. I know how to use muriatic acid. Do you really think a newbie fresh into the hobby knows how to use muriatic acid? No, it's a dangerous thing. I advise everybody stay away from muriatic acid if possible. Better to use something that's safe, like uh, evaporust, okay? You can handle it with your hands. You don't have to worry about disposal uh, procedures and things. Yeah, yeah it works. Yes, muriatic acid works good. I've seen it work. But, you know, for the purposes of radio repair and if you're new to the hobby, stay away from muriatic acid if possible. We don't want anybody hurt. There's a lot of safety requirements or procedures and caution, uh, cautionary things you need to take with that stuff. That's some dangerous crap. Okay, what's next here? Uh, Don, I'm a junk collector again. He said, get a ratcheting screwdriver set next time you go to Harbor Freight. That's a good idea. Maybe I'll do that. You know, a little tiny thing. Maybe I'll pick that up. I just don't have that much of a use for it. So, you know, I figure yeah, maybe I'll do that next time. Good idea. Good idea, Don. <laughs> uh, let me see. Here's another one. Uh, uh, Steve S. He said, put the fiberglass speaker on the back of the cone. Well, you know, it's that, that would not be quite so easy. You know, the, uh, the, the cone, I don't want to bend it any more than I have to. It's hard to get to. And to tell you the honest truth, it doesn't matter whether it's on the front or the back. It's still going to do the exact same job as far as strengthening the cone, okay? And, and it's going to never be seen. So I don't want to take the chance of damaging the cone. I'm not a young guy, you know, I do shake a little bit. My hands aren't as steady as they used to be. And uh, you have to understand uh, limitations sometimes. I have a lot of limitations. What's going on with my camera here? It's getting a little too blurry for me. There we go. Okay. And he also said, yeah, I should uh, tear apart that uh, rectifier. Where the heck is it? Let me find my, my curry. Yeah. He says I should... Uh, Tear apart the rectifier, clean it up, and rebuild it. That copper oxide. Nope. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to do that. There, there again, it, that would not fall in the category of a newbie being able to do that, okay? I'm not even sure I can do it myself. <laughs> I've been working on these things for a number of years. All right, let's pick out a couple more. This is fun, actually. Now, here's one from Tubacal, and uh, he, he's a very sharp individual. I went to his website. He's, he's pretty quick. He's got a lot of stuff going for himself. He thinks that, he says that these speakers like I have here are, are still made in Japan, and uh, I can get one for $5,000. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I don't think so, but in case anybody out there has $5,000, knock yourself out, okay? <laughs> that, that's nice to note the speakers are being made again. I had no idea. Good information. I appreciate that. And uh, here's a fella. He recommends buying a bottle of Croil, K-R-O-I-L, if I can afford it. Well, that, that term right there uh, tells me right now that, that that's out of the question because most people probably can't afford it and watch my, uh, my uh, channel. However, those of you who might be interested in buying that, maybe you can buy that $5,000 speaker along with that bottle of Croil. Oh, that, thanks a lot. I appreciate that, though. And uh, here's another one that tells me uh, that I should uh, put up a terminal strip and put my wires on it. Come on, guys. Come on. I know that stuff. Okay. Okay. And uh, you and Don get together and discuss that. Maybe you can give me some more, uh, uh, you know, more finite tips on those solder strips. You know? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, anyway, that's it for the comments. I, those were some great comments. I appreciate it all. Take it all in fun for what it's worth. And... Uh, Meanwhile, I'll head down to the bank, see if I can get a $5,000 loan. <laughs> Until next time, this is John.